The SNP's Ian Blackford has tried to attribute any possible setback to the EU-loving Nicola Sturgeon's Indy Ref 2 as a result of the Ukraine crisis. Speaking in an interview, he said, I want that referendum to take place in a timely manner. I want us to be able to execute the mandate that we have. To those that are expressing a desire for us to get on with our job, of course, we will do so. But we have to be mindful of where we are. Well, this delay would be the third after two failed attempts, first in 2017, when the SNP suffered heavy losses at the general election, and more recently in 2020, due to COVID and another setback risks enraging certain elements of the independence movement. And despite Sturgeon insisting a new referendum will be held next year, serious doubts have been raised over whether she can actually deliver her manifesto promise. So let's talk now to uh, the brilliant Neil Oliver. Neil, welcome to the show. Uh, hello, Mark. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, do you think Nicola Sturgeon's getting cold feet about a referendum? Uh, well, I don't know if it's cold feet. I don't think the. I don't think another referendum will ever happen. You're asking me for my opinion. That's my opinion, uh, and I don't think there's any appetite in Scotland for an independence referendum or to break up the union. Uh, I think the majority of Scots, uh, in, including myself, want Scotland to remain part of Great Britain. Um, and uh, yes, I suppose the, the facts are, uh, perhaps as Ian Blackford is, is uh, demonstrating there, that they have to find m more reasons, as they have done in the past, for kicking the whole issue uh, into the future and into the long grass, because in my opinion, it's just not going to happen because Scotland doesn't want it. Uh, what about all those people voting SNP, Neil? Yeah, there's, that, that's, a, that's a fact. It's, we, the, the, the devolution settlement that Scotland was handed gave us a, a, a version of proportional representation that was like a, you know, that, that old line about a horse designed by a committee look, ends up looking like a camel. Uh, it was supposed to prevent any uh, majority holding sway in, in Holyrood. Uh, but the but the SNP found a way to to game the system and 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 have that majority or or, or in 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 all but name, uh, and so we find we find ourselves in a situation uh, you know where we are a we are a one party state here with a with a mostly supine opposition and, a, and, a, and a, an ineffective supine media. Um, uh, the, the fact that there's a that that majority is there in Holyrood that does not reflect the, the reality in Scotland, which is that most people, most people don't want uh, Nicola Sturgeon's SNP running Scotland. It's just the way that the the version of proportional representation that we have can be manipulated. That that's the situation in which we find ourselves. It's it's more it's complicated. It's a complicated situation, but. We're not just a one-party state. We're run by a one-issue party. That that is the tragedy of Scotland. You know, if there was a if there was a hundred-mile-wide asteroid ten minutes from colliding with planet Earth, Nicola Sturgeon would step up to her podium and say that an independent Scotland would cope better with the impact. That is just that's all that the the SNP is about, and that's the the tragedy that Scotland finds itself in. It's cast out. It's cast into sharp relief. You know, the last couple of years, uh, the the COVID crisis, uh, for all the posturing, all the all the determination on the part of of the SNP and Nicola Sturgeon to to take Scotland on a different path, we didn't have a better war. In many respects, we ha we we had a we had a worse war than the rest of the UK. That all of that will come out in the wash, but all of that posturing didn't make any difference on the part of Scotland. And now here we are in a situation where there's a land war in Europe for the first time since, you know, well, it's... Anyway, here we are. We've got a land war um, and everything about the SNP just looks small. The SNP's preoccupation with 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 other people's children, with gender issues, uh, you know, in the face of their inability to to have a party in a brewery, you know, the failure of education, the failure of industry, the failure of the economy, the failure of infrastructure, the drugs death, the lower life expectancy. 
And just can't, once again, you know, the, the SNP are small, and world events like what is happening in Ukraine casts that in sharp relief. We 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 in Scotland it's, it might might be hard for the rest of the population of, of Britain to get a handle on it, but we are just run by a by a, a small, mean spirited group that that are incompetent and incapable. Neil, a real treat to have you on the show. Of course, you'll be back at the weekend, Saturday night, and you will return to Dan Wooten tonight. A week today, the brilliant Neil Oliver. What are your thoughts on that? Mark at gbnews.uk. Uh, Neil says, dear Mark, how on earth have the Scottish people been hoodwinked into falling for this SNP crap? Ruth says, dear Mark, I find Nicola Sturgeon's apparent obsession with transgender issues and her surveys of young children's sexual habits really inappropriate and frankly, quite creepy. If I were a parent, I would be incandescent if my child was asked to fill in a survey that, amongst other things, asked if they'd had anal sex. Does she have personal issues she should deal with? There's a question. Ruth, thank you so much for your email. Do keep them coming. 